real quiet and real low. I ain't even talking because it's like, up y'all wait till a few folks get in here before I start talking if y'all come in hit the like button if you ain't subscribed to the channel hit the subscription Peace. Peace, peace. Get right for y'all real quick. What up, y'all? What up? We got 11 people in so far. We only got uh, five likes. Everybody that's in, just hit the like button so it can bring some traction to the video. Let a couple people get in here. Now everybody been asking me. Top of the morning, good morning. We got like one more day. Coming to the end of Ramadan. New York had an earthquake, all types of. Oh, man. Good looking. Good looking. I need three more likes. Three more likes. If you ain't like the uh, joint yet, I need it to say 11-11. It's 11 people in so far. I need 11 likes. Whoever is in here that didn't like it, hit the like button. Please. Here we gonna talk today. Um, so, um, everybody been hitting me up the last week or so about Joel Santana, um, all the dialogue, shout out to all the dialogue. They've been hitting me up about his interview. People also been hitting me up about Jay, Be Jay Bezel from Philly interview. And, you know, I was chilling for my live, you know, I wasn't going to be going live and all that, but. You know, I'm gonna give my take on on the subject at matter. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna speak my truth. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to speak uh, in a way so everybody can understand where I'm coming from. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jake Bezel. Shout out to Joel Santana. All right, so check this out. So around night, around 2003, around 2003, this one, Jewels got his first apartment 
in Palisades Avenue, right next door to his mom's, 11 Harriet, out there in um, Palisade, um, Palisades Park, right? <clears throat> Jewel's at the condo, and you know, after we go to, from the studio or lead a block, you know, I used to go home to Jewel's crib with him. You know, I practically live with Jewel's. You know what I'm saying? And um, one day we sitting, we watching, uh, I think we watching uh, Blue Hill Avenue. And Jewel's is listening to the messages on his phone. And he like, yo, this kid left like two or three messages on my phone. But when he leave a message, he rhymed. So I'm like, where are you? He said, yo, listen. So he put it on speaker. This is when we at the next town church. He dialed up his voicemail. He heard a nigga bezel might have spit 50 bars, something like that. Fire. And when he in his raps, he'd be like, he'll leave his number. And he'd be like, this is Jay Bezel from Philly. So he probably did that maybe twice, three times. Els finally, Els finally, uh, got in contact with him. So, uh, Bezel started coming up here, but when he first came up here, he was a part of a group or a crew called the Eight Gang, all pro entertainment from Philly. Uh, Garcy, uh, wasn't down with them at the time, but Garcy from Dream Tracers wound up. Um, I think taking Bezel place after Bezel uh, left the group or whatnot. But he used to come up here with his, his man, I forgot his name, but he had freckles, right? He was nice too. And um, Bezel used to come up here, you know, spend two, three days in the studio. You know, it wasn't too much, you know. Els, well, you know, he had a... Uh, Bezel had a great sense of humor. He was cool. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Els took, took a liking to him. So, Bezel started coming up from Philly like every weekend. And, you know, just getting his feet wet, you know, doing little freestyles and, and whatnot. I was doing recording with Bezel and stuff like that. So, at the beginning, this was like right when Jewel's first um, built his studio, cause the studio got built because Bezel almost burnt up. I told this story on Unconstitute Hip Hop Stories. Bezel almost burnt up like close to 300 grand of Jewel's money in the oven. He ain't know that's what Jewel's was stashing his money at the time. So right after that, uh, we was watching, um, uh, in MTV Cribs and everybody had a studio in his crib and I guess that let, let a light bulb off in Jewel's head and he was like, yo, and you know what? Guitar Center's ass like, yeah, I know what I said. That same day, Jewel's took all that money and he had to go take some to the bank because a couple of probably 30,000 got burnt on the ends. They transferred the money and, and gave him clean new money and um, we went to Sam Ash and uh, had the studio, uh, bought all the studio equipment. Joel's had all the studio equipment in his uh, his condo at the time in boxes, because at this time he didn't have actually a location for the studio. It took a little while. When he finally found the location, he he built rooms inside of rooms, so he wouldn't have to mess with the original foundation and structure of the building. So. Uh, Like the the building, part of the studio, I was there for that whole process, and my reward for working, for for being with him and holding him down, cause Joel's son, his first son was just being born, so he had to go back, go look after his son, do stuff. I had to watch the studio, like the guys working at this time, and they have no heat or nothing. It was freezing in there, so uh. We finally start, you know, got the studio on the, on the, uh, on the ball, and you know, everybody was just working. At the time, 
only uh, I was signed to Purple City and I had a deal at Baby Grand Records. So at the time, everybody kind of lit. Bezel, he the newcomer. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have that much music out besides whatever he was doing with the eight gay out in Philly. So, you know, as time went on, Bezel, I say Bezel was around for like three years. From like 03, 05. I say in the 06, the beginning of the 07, it's like when Bezu left. And I seen Bezu interview, but it's it's the one thing that he forgot to put out. The reason, the initial reason why Els kind of distanced itself from Bezu because it was a rumor that the can't I can't feel my face album got leaked through Bezu by him leaving the CD somewhere or something like that. But that's the initial reason why Els really fell back from Bezel. Now, whatever conflicts or what they, whatever Bezel was feeling with him, I can't really say, but I can tell you what I do know. So we not going to bash Jewels and make Jewels look like a super slime boy because he was not, because he gave everybody ample opportunity to work for free and this is way before contracts Joel's never talked at no contracts with me ever I don't know what the situation was with him and Bezel but Joel's never came to me ever about a contract ever 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 never came to me about a contract never came to me about fees for studio time never he just let people work and if you ain't have nowhere to go he let you live in the studio for free, totally free. Now, yes, me and Jewels, we had our differences, but those differences really wasn't pertaining about what he did for me or what it was for the music. It was personal, family shit. And I won't go into that. I would never go into that. I never did go into that. But what I, I will say is, Jewels was young at the time, so for... For people to expect him to be as business minded as he is now or would have been, we was all young. So, uh, we was all young. So, I don't really fault him for doing things he he didn't know not was knowledgeable about. He he was he was an artist himself. You know what I'm saying? So being running a a, a, a a record label probably was a little too much on his hands at the time. So after the music got leaked, that's when he kind of distanced himself with Bezel, right? When Skull Gangs initially started in the beginning it was a few people that was involved with the original Skull Gang. Not the artist that actually signed to Skull Gang. The original Skull Gang was SAS, uh, Bugsy, Bezel, Reek Rose, Tobe Cobain, me. Um, and that was it at the time. My man did Gritty. He had his own thing, though, but he was a part of the team since which him and Bugsy was in a group. So they used to just come through and just, you know, just work. When Jewels and Bezel had to fall out around the end of 06, the beginning of 07, the initial Skull Gang wasn't put together. So the Skull Gang run. Bezel wasn't around for none of the Skull Gang run, for the album, none of the recording, none of that stuff. So he wouldn't really know what happened after he left. Now, at the time, only thing Bezel had out that people known him for was the 
certified gangster hook. That's all Bezel had out at the time, besides the freestyles and the little, you know, little music that Jewels was putting on the mixtape, so whatever was flying around on Duke the God mixtapes or whatever like that. And um I wouldn't say Bezel was known at the time because at remember he never did the certified gangster videos for so initially nobody really knew if you wasn't a part of the camp or no Bezel personally, you didn't know who Jay Bezel was. You didn't know him. He didn't have a face to him at the time. So I didn't know if he had any other deals on the table before he met Jewels. I don't know. I'm not going to call him a liar. I don't know. But I know for a fact when he got down with us, that's when Jay Bezel initially got his name known. And that's my brother. That's my bro. Fast forward. Me and Jewels came up with the name Skull Gang, and I came up with the acronym, which is Street Kids Unified by Loyalty and Lou Goons and Niggas Getting It. By that time, we got the acronym for Skull Gang. Bezel was out of the picture. So he wouldn't know what was going on with the initial group. Only person at the time that was signed to Baby Grand Records was me. Nobody knew about the independent game in the beginning. They got all that independent, people start getting these independent deals and these mixtape deals after me and Shice did the deal with Baby Grand. Point blank period. And we got the initial alley-oop from Aguilar. I will never take nothing away from Ag. We have our differences. I'll never take nothing away from Ag. The, the, the independent hip hop game came from Ag through a guy named Chris Landry, which put out Jewel's first uh, Final Destination mixtape. That's how everybody from the Dipset was introduced to the independent music game. Nobody was putting out music through independent companies before Aguilar and transition over to Purple City. Jewels and Shice fell out over the Final Destination uh, mixtape because Shice didn't feel he was compensated for the actual introduction of the mixtape because it was supposed to be a Purple City mixtape and you get a bonus CD, but they worked out a deal to where Els was able to make some money and when the money came around, whatever was negotiated wasn't finalized or it didn't go through on Shice's part. So that's where Shice fell out with Jewel's. Now, after that, years later, after uh, Purple City them put out 13 mixtapes, we start making a real buzz in the city. We recorded Purple City Bird Gang. By that time, we already 10, 11 mixtapes in. So God by the name of Chuck Wilson got the got got whiff of us. We got a deal. Nobody was everybody came after and did they deals. Nobody had a deal with uh Baby Grand except us. Chuck Wilson is an opportunist. He wanted to have his hands on anything that was dipset related. That's why he signed Purple City because we were so close to being, we was an offspring of Dipset. He wanted anything Dipset related. One thing for sure, two things for certain. I don't know what the negotiation between Bezel and, and Chuck Wilson was, but I definitely can tell you he ain't have 900,000 to give you or nobody else at the time. The staff and the, and, and, and the record label was very small. 
He can give you probably a hundred grand, seventy-five grand, but out that seventy grand, you gonna have to record your album out of that. It wasn't no nine hundred thousand dollar budget for nobody, not even nobody, no nobody. And at the time, I wouldn't even like if you ain't have the buzz in the streets and the name or the, the, the morale, you wasn't getting offered nothing back in them days. You had to really put in work. All the Dipset mixtapes got popping after Duke created Dipset uh, mixtape.com. And that's when the urge of the, the mixtape started going out and people started seeing revenue from them before. The mixtapes was ran through us, the Taliban on Hump 45th, and we sold all the mixtapes. Anything that was Dipset related, we had first, and we sold it from state to state. First time, Bezu went on a mixtape, uh, kind of tour to sell his mixtape. This is when he dropped the uh, the uh, Philadelphia Beast. Me, me and um, another artist took him on the road. Um... To, to sell his mixtape because we was already doing that for Jewels, like for years since Jewels came out and was dropping mixtapes. We was always going on the road, um, doing mixtapes. Great God, me and Great God was on the road and um, selling mixtapes at the time. Through state to state, state to state, state to state, state to state. And just so happens it was Bezel turn to drop a mixtape. He dropped it and we took him on a mixtape. So, so that's when Bezel first started to receive currency from his mixtapes. You can ask him. He'll tell you. First time I went out on the road with my mixtape, I was with Un. Now, yeah, that came later when he signed 40. They, whatever deal they did with 40 and JR, that came after. Purple City was the first diplomatic diplomat affiliates that will sound to uh baby grand records because after they seen us do the deal everybody thought they could go over the baby grand to do what we did at the top we was probably like the highest selling artists on all day label as an independent coming out the gate. We sold 10,000 records the first week independently. Back then, that's equivalent to selling 100,000 records through a major. We, we did our numbers and everybody thought we wasn't gonna even do those numbers. Everybody thought we was gonna flop. We came out and did 10,000, did another 3,000. We, we did our numbers. We, 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 we billboard, we charted billboard like number three, something like that. I never knew about the deals he had with Birdman or um, Jeezy. I never know about those. Like that's why I can't say if he, if he that it's, if it's a lie or anything. I don't know, but I know initially when we first heard of Bezel, he was rhyming on Jewels. I don't know who he was dealing with previously, so I can't say if that's true or not. I can't say he's a lie. I would never get on here and say, "Oh, that's not true." Or this. I don't know, but for the my initial uh, knowledge. Bezel really got lit after he did Certified Gangster. When the Scar Gang deal came, Bezel wasn't in a wasn't in a wasn't uh around. He wasn't in a picture at that time. So and um at the time L's Jewels was going through a transition in his life to where I don't think the music was his main objective. So that's why I guess we that's why the, the album, the Skull Game album got re put out. The mixtape got put out as the album, but we had a ton of work. It's just that we didn't have him on the work that we needed to put out because they, they, they initially just wanted to put out the work that Jewels had, you know what I'm saying? And you know, Jewel sacrificed his career too by not fully jumping straight back into Jewels. He actually did his thing 
and, 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 and collectively put together Skull Gang, which was me, Depp, De Niro, Star, and Rap. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was a couple of, Gene uh, Gray was signed to Baby Grand, Grand Pooba. It didn't start, it, it was like, you know, Chuck Wilson, he was definitely an opportunist when it came to wanting to be, because Dipset was the hottest thing, so he wanted a part of that. He wanted a piece of that. So, Purple City wasn't signed at the time. It, he, had, he seen ample opportunity to get his hands on the, the hottest thing next to Dipset, and that's what he did. And right after that, everybody else could, you know, uh, you know, hopped on kind of hopped on the on the on the train with that. After they seen us be, you know, did our thing over there, everybody thought they can come over there and bust a move, and that's what happened. It was kind of like father the leader type thing. Everybody came after that, so it was just like we 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 can't oppose. We was the we was the sac the sacrificial lambs to uh, baby Graham from the dip set first. We was the ones that. We was like the 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 guinea pigs to see if it would work, and it worked for us. And nobody was over there at the time. That's why we worked, cause we knew we couldn't eat off the diplomat plate, cause he has Cam had so many people on his plate. We was like, yo, we might as well keep doing what we doing. We already got our, our uh, um identity as being Purple City, so we might as well do what we do and keep moving and keep putting out tapes and. Once we did the Purple City Bird Gang and shot the video and then had it on smack and getting it serviced through Def Jam, through, through by Jim being a, a music director and stuff like that. Shout out to Carl Vernon that actually directed the video. Like, people um, gravitated to us. So after that, it was just like, um, anything that was diplomatic affiliated, Chuck, and you ain't have a deal, Chuck was going to wave a check at you. Not saying he had a million dollars for you, or he would, he would definitely give you 100000 and you would have to do your whole project with that. You know what I'm saying? But giving you a million dollars, Chuck definitely wasn't getting feet. And if he told Bezu that, he lied to his face because he, he wasn't definitely giving you nobody in the... Even artists that was bigger than me, bigger than Bezel, bigger than Jewels wasn't getting no nine hundred thousand dollar budgets at that time. You had to really be putting in work for somebody to even offer you that type of money. You know what I'm saying? You had to really be putting in work. And at the time, like I said, I only that's the only thing he had out was certified gangster and nobody knew who he was because he wasn't in a video. So I don't know. If Chuck told him that, that's crazy. A lot of producers came up with the beats, but the the uh, uh, entirely a whole lot of the production by Purple City was done by Aguilar. Ag brought a lot to Purple City. Ag brought a lot to Purple City, and for people to to uh, I would never sit here and say that Ag wasn't a um a valuable piece to Purple City because he was. He was the sound. He created a whole sound. Like we ain't want to go with the same type of wave like the heat bankers we we want to be have our own identity unlike some artists today where everybody sound like you had to have your own identity so we didn't we didn't follow the the trend of using the heat maker beat we create our own sound with ag a dark gritty underground sound that only ag at the time was doing you know what I'm saying? And he was doing a lot of beats for everybody. Onyx, Buster Rhymes, et cetera, et cetera. Always a give Agus flowers. So when I be seeing him jump out and diss me on the internet, I be like, yo, my dude, all y'all got to do what y'all wanted to do. 
All y'all got to do what y'all wanted to do. I never got to put out an album. Y'all got to put out an album. Shays got to put out an album. Ad got to put out an album on Baby Grand. I never put out no album on Baby Grand. So why everybody coming at me? Why everybody be pointing the finger at me like I did something wrong? Like I never got to, 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 to put out an album. And the album that I turned in, they said that it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't good enough. And then when I left the label... They wound up putting that album out with a bunch of other songs they didn't even own. So, like, I didn't I understand that. That's why I said Chuck Wilson is, he was, he's the work. Like, I, I regret even doing any business with that man because all he is is an opportunity, opportunist. Like, 99% of these people in the industry, the percentage of finding somebody that good in this industry that really cared, I really want to see you win from the heart is slim to none. So when y'all new artists get out there and y'all see all this stuff that's going on, y'all got to watch, man. Y'all rather stay independent and do it for yourself because all these labels is going to do is take a big chunk out of what y'all doing and, and, and that's it. And when you not hot no more, they're going to go find the next person. They only when Once you become unvaluable, they don't care no more. And that's what happens in the music industry. You know what I'm saying? And that's really my, my, my take on it. But, like, that that that's the God on the truth. Like, what y'all asked me about Bezel. When Bezel, Bezel got discovered by Jewels over the phone, and he told that story. But far as, like, um, another thing, I never... I wasn't, if it was a meeting, I never knew it was a meeting to that latter two because at the time, everybody was putting in work that was around Jewels. It wasn't, it wasn't nobody prioritizing nobody. Jewels ain't prioritizing nobody. Everybody had to work. And by that time, Jewels was prioritizing his artists. Skull Gang was created and everybody that was around with Skull Gang signed a deal through E1. And that's how we put out the Skull Gang album. We put out the Skull Gang mixtape by ourselves. Niggas probably sold 50, 60,000 of those in the streets. Like, millions of views on Worldstar. Like, like, we did our numbers. And when I see niggas like, when I see niggas like Joe and Tabo be trying to diss us, you was there every day. You was around us every day. You was around us every day. You was posting our videos. You was around us getting footage every day. We was the hottest thing in the street. But because you and Jewels had differences, you still almost 20 years later, 15 years later, you talking on down on niggas. Like, can't do that. You can't do that. The J. Cole and Kendrick, man, listen. But yeah. But whatever um gripes him and Jewels was having behind the scenes, I wasn't aware of those. I know the initial fallout because that can't feel my face music got leaked and the rumors was that Bezel was the reason that it leaked. But other than that, I don't know about other deals on the table. I can't tell y'all about that. That's between Jewels and Bezel. I can't tell y'all about that because I never knew about that. I never knew um, he had other deals on the table. Because when I met Bezel, he was a rapper from Philly that was in a group with some other guys. He, he wasn't even a solo artist. I don't... I can't even say he was, he was just in a, he was in a group and they was all nasty as fuck. They was all tough. All of them, every last one of them. I forgot the other guy's names, but all of them was fire. Every last one of them, but Jewels took the bezel because when bezel would call him and leave a message, he would always leave the hardest bars you would ever hear. And far as, and far as, Getting alley oops, some got. I'll say this: some people got opportunities 
that other people wasn't granted. But at the time, I just say that the whole game is cut, though. You know what I'm saying? It was the time where I felt, I might have felt that Jewels could have did more or gave me an alley-oop. But what's for you is for you. If it's meant to happen, it will happen. What's for you, I believe this. What's for you is for you. If it's meant to happen, it will happen. If it don't happen, it won't happen. Now, I don't feel like I did everything, fulfilled everything musically because a lot of opportunities was blackballed. A lot of opportunities was blocked. A lot of, a lot of, it was just a lot of, it was just a lot of confusion. And it, and it, be, and it became to where I didn't love it no more. It becomes when you, when you don't love something, some, something that you've been loving since you was a little kid, when you lose the passion for something, it becomes awkward. It, it, com it becomes harder to uh, concentrate musically and creatively when you thrown off. You get continually thrown out your zone. When you're in the zone and you try to lock in, you get thrown and, and people putting these obstacles, you got to kind of structure your mind and like mentally, you got to really try to get over things mentally because that's all this game is. It's, it's, it's never going to, this, this game is going to give you, this is one of the biggest jewels I learned from Jim and, 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 and Bezu said it on his interview. You don't never get what you feel you deserve. You get what you negotiate. So make sure when you negotiate it, you get in what you want. Simple. Other than that, it's the cutthroat game. You're not going to get you what you want. You're not going to get an alley you. And, and nobody owe you nothing. That's what you got to know in the business. It was times where, where parts of members of Skull Gang would get features with, with Wayne. And I, I had dope shit. And I was like, damn, Wayne would be perfect. And my shit wouldn't get sent. Did I feel a certain way at a time? Yeah, I did. I can't front. Because I was like, yo, damn, why they getting this oop and I can't get it? But like I said, what's for you and what's for you is for you. And you know, that, I believe in that. So you can't trip over that type of stuff. You can't, you can't, and you can't even trip. You got to thank God and be appreciative for the opportunities you got. You know what I'm saying? The opportunities that you get might not pan out the way you want, but you got to be thankful and you got to be um, appreciative for the opportunities you was granted because you know how hard it is back in them days to get granted the opportunity to even be close to a person like Jewels. It was it, it, it was second to none because Jewels ain't fuck with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Jewels ain't fuck with everybody. John Depp was in a group. He ain't fuck with everybody musically from but he fucked with that. Word. So, 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 so you got to be appreciative for the, uh, you got to be appreciative for the, for the opportunities you get. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, sometimes you only get one shot. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, like, everybody that Jewels had around him was talented. And everybody asked me, yo, what you felt about the Art of Dialogue uh, interview? You know, everybody has their own truths. Everybody got their own narrative of, of, of how they see their life or how they see their story. You can't be mad the way people paint their narrative. One, one narrative that I can definitely conflict with, but it won't be a conflict, is Els definitely had a team around him to win. He had Lynn. He had Big Joe. He had Cam at the time. He had us. He definitely had a time. He definitely had a team to win. He definitely had a team to win, and he also had opportunities to get around other people to help him win. I remember being in the studio and Eminem manager coming to see him, Paul Rosenberg. I think that's his name. Oh, Paul, Paul, yeah, I, yeah, 
Rosenberg, know his name, not from Hot 97, the other Paul Rosenberg, but Eminem manager, he had ample opportunities to become bigger than than their life. And when Cam and, and Mace say on a Jay-Z level, they not talking about in Jay-Z shadow of being a rapper, they talking about just successful guys, like else could have been the biggest star ever. Ever, 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 ever. Jewels as an artist can't never say, ladies, I would never let nobody even shit on him and say he was late. It was a time when that kid had three, four hundred songs finished in the stash. In the stash, like four hundred, five hundred songs on a stash, like recording three to four to five songs a day. When he first opened up his studio, that kid was going but but noodles. So it's not it's just that sometimes people lose the love and the passion and, and the pressure from this shit. People like it, it, like if you're not a music a musician or an artist, you wouldn't understand this shit. Yeah, yeah, Paul Rosenberg. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of, like a lot of kids ain't like, like I tell all the kids, y'all got it easy. We ain't had no Instagram. We ain't have no, we ain't have no, we, if you ain't have no studio, you was fucked up. And y'all can just get a, 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 a. A, a M audio mic and a laptop and record and upload your music, not even mix it and catch a wave. Like, it's so easy for y'all. We didn't have it easy. I slept on floors. I slept on floors. I lived out of state hungry, fucked up, sleeping on floors, all that shit. Y'all don't know that part of it. Sleeping in vans, getting electricity for my man apartment because I don't want to go home because I'm, 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 because I'm, I'm, I'm I'm chasing this music shit. Being famous and fucked up. What y'all know about being dead, broke, but famous? People walking up on you for pictures and autographs, but you ain't got a dime in your pocket. Yeah, I went through that same shit too. That's why I be trying to talk to these artists. Chase the fucking fortune. Fuck the fame. You'll be a famous, fucked up, broke artist. You'll be a famous, fucked up nigga. Fuck the fame. Get the fortune. Chase the fortune. Chase the money, get the money, chase the opportunity, chase the experience. Chase the moment. Fuck chasing the fame, cause the fame ain't shit. You you like once you get to a certain uh status of fame, you don't lose you don't lose your fame, but you will lose your fucking money. I seen a lot of famous motherfuckers go broke. There's a lot of famous broke motherfuckers. You don't wanna be a famous broke motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be a famous broke motherfucker. And like, and when you tell him the story, you got to tell it all. That's the only thing, you know, that Bezel didn't mention in the joint. You know what I'm saying? Why the, that? Why the initial f fallout went? You know, like you got to tell it all. You know, you know, you got to tell every detail. You got to tell why things got rocky because. Once you once people paint this one narrative, I if if Jewel's guy says something about I'm I'm gonna paint the picture the way it is. The initial fallout was because that music got leaked. I never knew it was because they had business business differences. Because at that time it wasn't no even no business to conduct. Everybody was just like it was a free for all. Everybody was just trying to get placements, trying to get on these albums. You know, trying to get a name for themselves, and you know, out of anybody, Bezel, he caught a he caught a classic track that's gonna live on forever, and just that it is 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 uh unfortunate he didn't get to showcase his talent in front of the camera for that hook, but he he had a hell of a, a hook on that song, and um it's gonna live forever, but like he said, unfortunately he couldn't make the flight because his number got changed, but. That's about that's 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 kind of what, it in a whole nutshell, like for real. Because Skull Gang could have been way bigger than it was. Els was going through a transition in his life that nobody can understand. 
but him, and he was going through it, and you can't fault for nobody for going through their growing pains. That's what I learned that being as growing older and, and, and maybe when I was that younger back then, I didn't understand it, but now as we're aging, as you live on, you, you start to learn things and you start to look at things in a different perspective. I don't know mentally what Jewels was going through. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I gotta, you know, you know, I know what I know, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's not to share with none of y'all, but, you know, everybody has their own demons. Everybody has their own ups and downs in life, and everybody has they, they ample opportunity to fix these things in life, and everybody's going to work on their they wrongs and their rights in, in life. Because karma is very real, and um, you just got to apply yourself to, to, to get back to, on track, you don't have to like some some a lot of people try to chase and grasp the same success they had from before, and that's where they mess up. Start off fresh, start off on a whole new journey. Sometimes you gotta end you gotta end one chapter to begin another. That's what a book is, you know what I'm saying? The book of life. You gotta end one chapter and open up a whole nother chapter you until a long cause for you, you still got a book to write. You still got chapters, so people got to know that. Stop trying to live the chapters you lived in your in, in, in the previous book. You know what I'm saying? Not that that they know that already. They read that part of the book. Give them a new piece of you, and I and that's my advice to anybody that's looking on the past and stuck on the past and can't get past because it's so hurtful. Yeah, I went through that same shit: depression, suicidal thoughts. All that type of shit, mental health, all that. I overcame all that by understanding, by looking at a different perspective. Once you have a, 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 a tunnel vision and you got one perspective that's dangerous and you will crash right into a motherfucking wall because don't nobody care about, about you, about more than you, than you. So once you learn that, you got to, before you can love a female, before you can love your kids, before you can even love God, you got to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you got some real fucking tuning in and some real focusing up and, 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 and tighten up to do because you got to love yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, some people say you got to love God first. Yes, you got to love the law first, but you got to love yourself too. Yeah, man. Yeah, so that's my take on it. Like I said, I can't say Bezel was lying about anything that he felt, whatever he felt, whatever he going through. He he shared it with the people, but from what I from what I was around, and especially on the Skull Gang side, Bezel wasn't even around for those times, so he can't really even speak on. Those, you know, he, he definitely uh, stayed in contact with all of us. So he got bits and pieces of what was going on. But, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't blame, I don't, I don't blame nobody for my shortcomings. I don't blame nobody because I came in this game and, you know, I had, uh, I have, a, a, a dope ass journey and it's not over. You gotta keep striving. You know what I'm saying? You can't be you 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 you, you can't be worried about the past. You know what I'm saying? You gotta keep pushing and striving and recreating yourself. Reinvent. Reinventing is great. Reinvent yourself. Or tap into something that people wouldn't expect you to do if you can do it. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that we we know how to do other than what people known us for, but we don't tap into those things because we all we 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 always worrying about what somebody gonna think. Stop worrying about what somebody gonna think, cause the people that's laughing at you ain't got nothing going on. Niggas that's talking the most shit, they ain't got nothing going on. And the reason why they laughing at you, cause they think you ain't got nothing going on. Keep making yourself uh, relevant. Keep recreating yourself, keep reinventing, keep creating new things, put yourself around positive people, uh, delete negative thoughts, insert 
positive thoughts into your mind and, and, and put yourself into a state of mind to where you can feel undefeated. A lot of people is crumbling nowadays because they feel undefeated. And uh, it's a lot of things that's just fear mongering. And it's a lot of people just taking on, man, when God ready, God ready. You know what I'm saying? When 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 when, when God ready for you, He gonna let you know. You know what I'm saying? And I just tell everybody out there, just keep praying. Like, you know, it's the last two days of Ramadan, and you know, just try to keep a clear mind and just try to stay focused and just try to stay away from, you know, negative bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You got to. I don't know why they talking crazy. That don't bother me. That be that's weird old activity when you say something negative on someone. Get the Jews. This I'm giving out piles. This is for the people that want to get positive internet energy. I don't pay none of that. My 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 God is too powerful to even pay attention. Or waste time. Lake of Salaam. But, man, I try to stay focused and positive. But, you know, that's what I can speak on on that issue, though. I don't know what um, Bezu and uh, Jewels was going through personally on the business side because I wasn't there for those meetings or behind the scenes. I don't know. But I can fact check a lot of other things. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Sometimes you just got to be grateful for the opportunities you was granted and be appreciative and move on. You know what I'm saying? With no bitterness. And I know it's hard. It's hard because we human beings and we're not perfect. But if you if you if you if you hold on to old bitterness bitterness and you hold on to previous trauma, you'll never move forward. And it's it's self destructing. So get away from that. Get shake that shit off. Whoever going through that, whoever need to hear that. Shake that shit off, for real. Shake that shit all the way off. Because at the end of the day, nobody's going to care more than you, than you. So, you know what I'm saying? Stay positive. You know what I'm saying? And I, I pray for Bezel and I pray for Els. I pray for everybody to just get past whatever mishaps we have with each other because it's all dumb. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't blame Cam, Jim, Joels, nobody for no for none of my shortcomings at all. I appreciate I appreciate um, all the opportunities y'all granted me. Let me do the first album. I appreciate that. I still want my plaque, but I appreciate that. I ain't tripping about nothing. Word up. Joels was never a slime boy. He spent a lot of money on niggas, and this is what I'm saying. When it came down to the Skull Gang shit, Joel spent a lot of money for niggas out of his pocket. You know what I'm saying? He he, he he decked out the studio for niggas. He gave niggas a place to live. He built a shower for niggas. And, 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 he, and he helped niggas as much as he could at the time for, for, for the reach that he had. And he was going through his own trials and tribulations within the game. So you got to appreciate a man for that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just... You know, kick a man when they down. You can't kick no man when they down, cause if they ain't dead, they gonna get up and 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 and, and, and come back. Stories is the best stories. Like niggas come back, like niggas come back, and sometimes niggas come back stronger than they ever was before. So just understand who you kicking 
when they down, man. That's why I don't kick niggas when they down. I don't really say much. I'm outspoken. I say real shit, but at the end of the day, I ain't here to put nobody down. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, yeah, like I said, L's, when it come, came to Skull Game, he, he was well invested, and he made sure niggas was good. Anybody from Skull Game, you ask them, did they get it when they was doing they, when they signed they, they, they deal, did they get a check? When Star signed to Skull Game, for that album, she got a check. When Rap signed, he got a check. When Depp signed, he got a check. On um, Nero, he didn't get paid. I didn't get paid due to the fact that the circumstances, to read the, what I was told, the reason that I didn't get any money from the Skull Gang, because I had to pay back money to Baby Grand to get me to even do, was be able to even be able to do the Skull Gang album. So that's why I didn't receive no money. But And Steve, he didn't really receive anything. But besides that, nobody can not say Jewels didn't pay them. Anybody that got some money and anybody that should have some gripes about some money should be me. Because I never, I never signed off on Baby Grand. I never signed off. I don't know what was negotiated. I don't know none of that. But anybody that should have some gripes about some money should be me and Nero. Because we ain't received, and, and we, we worked our ass off for two and a half years. And I don't fought nobody for that. I don't even give a fuck about that type of shit. But for anybody to have a gripe about some money and some opportunities, shit like that, the niggas that should have the most gripes don't never say nothing. Never hear nothing from Nero, never hear nothing from me. And we signed the Skull Gang. You know what I'm saying? We signed our name on the dotted line. But like I said, anybody else, you ask them did they receive a check from Skull Gang, they gonna tell you yeah. And if they tell you no, they a fucking lie. And L spent money in promotion to make us look good from the from the parties to the to the to the movie premieres, renting out the movie theater and and and, and spending thirty thousand in liquor, shit like that. Like let's not let's not do, let's not try to make seem like L's is some super slime ball. He a piece of shit, cause he's not that. I mean, spent a lot of his fucking money on niggas, and nigga, when, when nigga, I ain't see nobody saying nothing when, when nigga, when niggas was renting out movie theaters for the Biggie premiere, and every row in the movie theater had champagne and Patron, or when he was throwing his birthday parties and everybody was getting decked out, going to those, making us look good, or having, uh scenario shooting videos for niggas all that shit that shit wasn't free that shit came out of nigga pocket body like a maserati all that i'm talking about videos cars wardrobe all that shit haircuts everything let's not let's not do that let's let's not let's not act like that boy ain't do shit for niggas because he did a lot let's not do that we're not gonna do that i'm not gonna let nobody do that and like i said the reason why that, I mean, why uh, Bezel can say that was because at that time, when the money was spent and when Jewels was investing in his artists, he wasn't even around there. But when when it came to Skull Game, you ask niggas, ask Star, ask Depp, ask niggas that was around. That boy spent a lot of his fucking money that he didn't get a return on. He spent a lot of money and he didn't get a return on it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I got to say on that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. Joel spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm telling you, he spent some money. He spent money from the studio to paying the rent for the studio to to paying for the videos to pay to 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 getting us on platforms to like he did a lot. And it's not and, and, and you know there's people that you know so. When, just think about that. Just be appreciative for the opportunities you grant. When Diddy was around us, he came to our studio. 
and listen to music. My, my accountants were duty was totally professional and and an experience that I never forget and it was totally positive. And that's the problem. I never get on here and bash no black man because I don't know what these allegations is. I wasn't there, so I cannot. And the man is proven innocent until he's proven guilty. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna leave that at that. But we've been in here for an hour. And that's just my take on the whole sh shit from the Skull Gang to the Jake Bezel shit to all this shit. I'm just telling you my piece. And like I said, Joel's he gonna see this, Bezel gonna see this, everybody gonna see this. I'm just speaking my part. I care Joel's did a lot for niggas. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot. He, it might have didn't pan out the way you wanted to, to pan out, but I care did a lot. He did what he can. And I appreciate you and I love you forever for doing what you could. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. I don't have no grudge against nobody, man. Let's get money. Let's stop holding these grudges. Let's get past it. Stop letting this this old pre these old previous uh, traumas um, stagnate us. Cause you know what I'm saying. All stagnation is is not is keeping you in in, in a mo in, in a non motion. So get the fuck away from the stagnation. Stop worrying about the past and let's get past it, man. Let's get past it. It's hard, I know it is. You speak, I'm speaking from experience. Get past the trauma. Get over that hurdle or that stagnation. Fuck the past. Think about the present and the future, man. God bless and good night to everybody.